very good morning to you all and thank you for joining right and early this Wednesday morning for our EU clusters talk from the European cluster collaboration platform on behalf of the European Commission. My name is Jennifer Baker and I'll be your moderator today. We are going to be talking about crossing borders and the importance of instruments of interregional collaboration, something that's absolutely essential to delivering the green and digital transitions. We have quite a packed schedule to get through today. So we will start, as always, with the news from the European Cluster Collaboration Platform. We'll then have three presentations from the European Commission to set out what we're talking about when it comes to this cross-border and cross-ecosystems investments. Then we will have our panel debate. We've got some great speakers there lined up for you as well, with different perspectives from different regions. Then. We also really want to have this open round of discussion with everyone and finally wrapping up as always with funding opportunities. So I will remind you that if you want to share on social media, you can use the hashtag EU clusters talks. But for today, for this in Zoom conference, we really do want as many people to get involved. It's a debate, it's a discussion. So please use the Q&A function down at the bottom of your screen to ask questions of our panelists. So you can use those specifically directed to all the panelists or to individual panelists. The chat function is for commenting, for sharing links, for saying hello and for getting to know your fellow participants. But we also want you to join the debate as well. Use the raise hand function if you'd like to add something, you want to respond, you've got a comment or a question to what you're hearing us talk about. And Nina will allow you to unmute yourself and activate your camera so that when you take to the floor, we'll all be able to see and hear you as well. And if you're going to do that, it's probably worth noting that this session is being recorded. With that, I am going to hand over the floor to Nina Hoffman from the European Cluster Collaboration Platform to tell us a bit about the news that's happening. And also, I should point out, Nina is a very real, real representative of cross-border collaboration today, because I think you're in Sweden today, Nina. Exactly. We are connected today from the Cluster Collaboration Lab in Lund, Sweden, that we have today and we already had yesterday, building together projects um, of hopefully uh, interregional um, nature. So we are really looking forward to the discussions today. And we also have more in store from the European Cluster Collaboration Platform that I would like to share. Um, earlier this month, on the uh, 2nd and 3rd of March, um, the first Cluster Booster Academy was successfully concluded with two in-person training days, which took place in Strasbourg in France, with 27 cluster man managers from more than 20 European countries. So a uh, very nice uh, in exchange there and learning process for the cluster managers. And we would like to announce that we will have a second Cluster Booster Academy round this year, and the application will open in April. So please be on the lookout in case you want to participate in the next Cluster Booster Academy. Um, we will announce the application for this shortly. What you can already register for if you're interested is the Clusters Meet Regions and Matchmaking in Finland which will take place at the end of April. We will go um, to an event to talk about a sustainable approach to raw materials, especially focusing on circular economy and digitalization. And the aim is to bring together clusters and policymakers from different levels to talk about how to strengthen industrial ecosystems, what's the role of clusters and support economic development. Plus we will combine it with matchmaking. So if you're looking for companies or um, other stakeholders from the from the raw materials mining sector. This is also the place to go. And uh, one particular highlight I would say is also the visit to the Kitilek Gold Mine for, for 50 mining sector professionals. So um, if you're interested, come to Finland for this. What is upcoming is also matchmaking in Morocco, which will be a physical matchmaking event. Um, held in the context of the GTEx Africa, one of the largest tech events of the continent, which will take place in Marrakesh. Um, the dates are the 31st of May until the 2nd of June. Or if during that time you would rather go to Taiwan, that is also a possibility because there is also matchmaking happening in the context of uh, Computex. 
So this, uh, these topics will be more related to AI, robotic semiconductors, um, 6G, and also um, circular economy. Uh, the similar dates, 30th of May until the 2nd of June. So we would already, um, if you're interested in coming, put this into your calendar. And last but not least, I um, wanted to share um, also the possibility to take uh, play, uh, to take part in a training session that is organized by the Enterprise Europe Network on environmental, social and corporate governance, company reporting and financial providers approach to sustainable investments. It's a very interesting topic to talk about sustainable investments. It will take place in a hybrid format, so you can follow it online if you're not based in Brussels where the training takes place. You can register until tomorrow. Um, you see here on the screen the agenda, so talking about uh, EU international policy framework, talking about the financial providers approach, what are sustainability criteria applied to SMEs, what are assessment tools, and of course also what is the impact on SMEs. So if you're interested, please register until tomorrow. And with that, back to you. Thank you very much, as always, Nina. We'll hear from you later on again with the uh, funding opportunities. We're going to turn now to the first of our trio of presentations from the European Commission. And joining us, we are delighted to welcome from DG Grow, Benoit Esman, Policy Officer, who will present the Interreg Task Force. So Benoit, well, it's over to you. We'd like to hear from you. Yes, uh, thank you, Jennifer, and good morning to everyone. So as uh, Nina already mentioned it, uh, we are currently in Lund in Sweden, work with uh, clusters and uh, individual SMEs on trying to build projects together. So I guess that most of you are pretty used to develop projects um, across the borders and linking with uh, other clusters located in Europe. But uh, maybe just to set the scene, uh, I wanted to give you a short overview of uh, what we've been doing uh, within the Commission uh, through the Industrial Forum. Because the Industrial Forum is an expert group which was set up in early 21 and which is gathering basically all the representative from, from the industry at European level. So the big confederation of construction, of uh, uh, wind um, energy producers, um, from the mobility sector, etc. And uh, the, this task force uh, is supposed really to assist the Commission in the implementation of the policies and the program as well. And one of the purpose of the Industrial Forum was really to co-design solutions directly with the stakeholders. Among the different task forces that were set up within this Industrial Forum, one of them was dedicated in particular to cross-border cooperation and cross-border investment. And so we had around 25 members of the Industrial Forum, which have been discussing over a year, year and a half, to produce a report uh, in which are identified areas with potential for cross-border investments and cross-ecosystem cooperation. I'm sure that we will be discussing that later with, with Murphy, who was holding the pen uh, when drafting this report. But just to give you already the three topics that came up from that report. First, the production and use of renewable energy. Secondly, how digital-based solutions can help improving the circularity of the economy at European level. And thirdly, how uh, to further develop microelectronics. So you can see that it's pretty much related with the green, the digital transition, and then the microelectronics, let's say, is related with the CHIPS Act. But what we want to do now is really to help coming with concrete project proposal or, or with concrete examples showing that cross-border investment, cross-ecosystem cooperation actually works and can deliver. We are coming towards the end of the mandate of this commission. We've been putting a lot of uh, legislative proposals and again last week with the Net Zero Industry Act and the Critical Raw Material Act. But it's really also time to show what uh, the industrial stakeholders in the EU can do together really within this European perspective, joining forces together, developing things together, and helping achieving the objective of the EU industrial strategy and the main policies at the European level. So I'll, I'll leave you to that because the colleagues will present you the instruments that we can uh, use in that regard. Uh, and just again to mention that uh, following what we will be discussing here in Lund with project proposal, the project ideas that we're discussing, we'll come back to you probably also later on 
to um, present you uh, the outcome uh, of Lund. And the last word is really that in case you're already looking for financing opportunities, I mean, uh, the colleagues from the ECCP have developed an input paper, which is available on the ECCP and which is already providing you with a lot of information about the EU programs or instruments that you could use to fund cross-border investment and cross-ecosystem cooperation projects. Thank you very much, Benoit, for that. Um, I'm sure if people have questions, they'll be able to ask them in the chat or ask them in the Q&A, and we'll get back to you with any further clarifications that are needed. We'll turn now to Estelle Roger, Programme Manager in, of course, DG Regio at the European Commission. Estelle, uh, give us your perspective on the importance of enhancing cross-border and cross-ecosystems investments. Thanks a lot, uh, Jennifer, and um, good morning to everyone. I would like to, to present you Interreg, Interreg, the European Territorial Co uh, Cooperation, better known as Interreg. Thanks uh, for the presentation. Ne next slide, please. So for the period 21, uh, 27, so it's really the, the main instrument to cope across borders under the cohesion policy. We have now um, 80, 86 programs with a funding envelope of 10 billion euro for the period 21-27. And this instrument operates at four geographical levels. And so you have the cross-border, the transnational, interregional, and also something new for the period 21-27, we have programs with the outermost regions. And uh, we have also the external cooperation, so the external dimension fully um, integrated as well in Interreg. So we have um, programs with uh, neighboring countries and also candidate countries. Next slide, please. So just a uh, very brief, uh, it's really one of the, it's, it's, it's one of the two goals of the, the EU cohesion uh, policy. The first one being the, the so-called mainstream programs, so more the ERDF and the ESF programs, the classical one, but we have also um, the Interreg uh, program that gives a cooperation from framework really, so working together across borders at different geographical level, and for the period 21-27, the main focus will be on on the on the tr on the transition the digital and the green transition depending as well on the programs because there are some uh, i would say um uh, concentrations of the funds on the priorities on the eu priorities so basically all the programs can have and can focus on the eu priorities so these so called uh, policy objectives and the uh, one is particular important for you is the policy objective one, uh, because it's clearly uh, uh, part of it is clearly to support the cluster policies. Next slide, please. So when you would like to, um, to apply under uh, Interreg, you really have to ask you um, basic questions huh, with whom you would like to cooperate with where are you located on which territory you would like to cooperate and um, and on which subject you would like to to cooperate on and there is a nice um, very interesting very important for you uh, website is the interreg.eu so where, where you can find all the programs the geography of each programs interreg and also the ongoing calls of proposals and um, to to have maybe an overview of what was funding during the previous period 1420 there is also a database on keep.eu so you can see which programs um, already focus on support to cluster policies, for instance. Next slide, please. So I had a look as well, uh, because me, I'm, I'm more uh, on interregional cooperation, but I had a look as well on other strands with other colleagues. And uh, I could see, because most of the programs have been adopted. Huh? Um, so I could see that there are some transnational programs like the Interreg Central Europe, the Interreg Northwest Europe, that have clearly in their programs some funds dedicated to support to cluster policies. Um, so it's, it's and cluster organizations are really mentioned as target groups in the programs. So it's um, it will be important for you really to have a look at uh, the programs. It requires a bit of research, I know, but it, I think it, it's worth uh, having a look at this uh, funding uh, possibilities as well. Next slide, please. Um, because I'm the desk officer for, for Interreg Europe, it's uh, the, the program working at, um, at pan-European level, and uh, we have also uh, non-EU uh, uh, countries participate at this program. Um, I had a look at the 
period 1420. And um, it's, it's, uh, th there were some uh, projects, interregional projects uh, addressing cluster policy. They are listed in these slides. Maybe you know, maybe you were part of this as well. Uh, so they, they are funding possibilities as well under uh, Interreg Europe. And next slide, please. And the second pillar as well of um, Interreg Europe is a policy learning platform with expertise. And they have worked a lot uh, before as well in the past on, on, on support to cluster through policy briefs. Uh, they have organized some events as well, and they have also a database on good practice. Uh, but I, I'm sure you, you already had a, had a look at it. And uh, uh, to, to finish, I uh, would like to, next slide, please. Um, I was in Stockholm, um, okay, just on, on this. So Interreg Europe has launched the first call for proposal last year. So all the projects have been selected and they have started on the on 1st March uh, this year. Um, and there they are two projects that are addressing the topic uh, of cluster. They are here, it's debuting and acceler accelerate. Um, if you would like to have more info on these two projects have been selected, you can have a look at the website of Interreg Europe, but there were uh, already some funding possibilities. And uh, finally, next slide, please, the final one. The second call for proposal under Interreg Europe was launched uh, uh, last week in Stockholm, um, and it lasts uh, from the 15th of March until the, the 9th of June. So there is uh, funding opportunities for you as well, uh, for your organization. So go for it. It's, um, it's a very good experience. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Estelle, for covering all of that for us so quickly. <laughs> I know it was a lot to get through in quite a short space of time. Thank you. We'll go on now and hear from Milena Stoyanova, who is a project advisor at ESMIA, better known as the European Innovation Council and SME's executive agency. So, Milena, I know you have slides as well, so over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Good morning, everyone. And thanks for inviting me to share some information about the Interregional Innovation Investment Instrument. Next, uh, next slide, please. Um, next slide, please. What is the Interregional Innovation Investment Instrument? This is a new instrument uh, implemented under the cohesion policy, and it comes to link regional innovation ecosystems partners to scale up their common innovation uh, investment projects. What is important is that this is a, a place-based instrument in contrast with some uh, other instruments that supported clusters, innovation, value chains. Uh, for I3, uh, the, uh, the Interregional Innovation Investments Instrument, uh, the places matter. We are looking for projects and investments that are relevant for the socioeconomic uh, transformation of a given uh, place. Uh, with regard to the value chain dimension, uh, the, relevant, uh, the, the investments there, uh, they're carried out uh, along the concept of the value chains in order to uh, embed SMEs in an existing value chain or to uh, reshape or create new value chains um, thanks, to, uh, thanks to these uh, investments that will uh, come in. For whom is this uh, interregional innovation investment instrument? Uh, what we want uh, to uh, to see in our uh, projects, in the proposals that we we'll receive, uh, is a well uh, represented quadruple helix ecosystems, meaning that. Uh, Everyone is welcome, researchers, businesses, small enterprises, big enterprises, uh, civil society, uh, public administrations, et cetera. So here comes the importance of the clusters. We, we hope to see lots of clusters in these projects. But why? Because uh, we know that clusters, they, they host innovative companies. Uh, we know that clusters, they're working very closely with regional authorities. We know that many clusters are involved in uh, working or reshaping uh, S3 platforms, S3 priorities, etc. So uh, clusters are well positioned to, uh, to uh, as bridge builders between all these um, actors that we want to see from the quadruple helix. 
how we implement the instrument, while well, it's uh, implemented under the direct management, uh, DG Radio is our uh, parent DG, but the, uh, the, pro the instrument is uh, implemented by our agency, by AISMEA, uh, via a biannual work program. We are publishing calls, call for proposals for, for now. There will be also a call for tender in the future. Uh, so uh, stay tuned on the uh, funding and tender portals uh, to follow all these uh, calls. And as you see here, uh, the last column of, of, of my uh, slide, there, there is quite a lot of uh, EU funding to be to be distributed in the context of this instrument. Next slide, please. Um, let's uh, let's keep in mind the, the general policy objective, how, how the instrument was conceived. It was conceived to, to increase the competitiveness and resilience of the EU value chains to achieve cohesion goals. The specific objectives, uh, they are uh, to interconnect the regional innovation ecosystems along the S3 priorities. Uh, the, I3 comes to combine the bottom-up uh, S3 priorities with the EU strategic priorities. Uh, we hope that our projects would support demonstration, commercialization, scale-up of interregional investments. And I3 comes to create synergies and complementarities with other EU programs. Again, here the importance of the clusters uh, come because we know that many clusters uh, were involved uh, or are are currently involved in other uh, EU projects uh, for the uh, creation, reinforcement, enhancement of EU value chains. So here come also there to make the bridge from previous projects, from previous achievements towards uh, new investment projects in with interregional dimension. Next slide, please. Um, here, uh, just an overview of uh, the course that we are have published and will still publish. We have three thematic areas, uh, digital transition, a green transition, smart manufacturing, and all these thematic areas come uh, in each of, uh, of the calls. You will find them uh, there uh, as an option. So uh, for uh, the time being, we have uh, published calls under strand one, strand two A, and strand two B of I3. Uh, we will again launch this course very, very shortly. As, as you can see, the first course for strand one and strand two will be published in uh, May or uh, in June uh, at the latest. Uh, the next uh, strand 2B call will be uh, published in autumn and uh, there will be also a call for tender that will come uh, later, later this year for technical assistment, uh, assistance and uh, experimentation. Um, for those who already know that our codes, please, um, um, take into account that there will be some novelties. We have tried to listen to uh, to our, let's say, first batch of uh, um, projects we're currently having in 11 projects um, going on. Uh, we have tried to listen to the difficulties that the partners have faced uh, during the, the, the preparation of the proposals, during the grant agreement preparations, et cetera. So uh, there will be some novelties that I'm sure you, you will appreciate. But let's dip a little bit, uh, dig a little bit I think we have lost connection there. Uh, can I check with the uh, the host organizers whether we can get our speaker back or whether we are going to proceed uh, and just show the remaining slides for people to read themselves or they can come back and have a read of them um, after today's event. Yep, thank you. I also think the last Milena that um, if she connects in a second, we can get back. If not, let's move to the next. Sure. But I'll take the opportunity then to remind everyone again that during the panel discussion, we do want you to be involved. Please either use the Q&A function or even better, raise your hand and uh, switch on your mic or your mic and your camera and tell us your thoughts. Give us your input, your experience. 
um, what, what challenges you see ahead or how you think uh, you can feed into this discussion that we're going to have uh, about the importance of each right, regional connectivity. So I'm not seeing any sign of, no, I think we'll probably just have to, unfortunately, skip ahead to, I don't see Milena's coming back. No, we're going to have to skip ahead to the panel discussion. And um, if Milena does manage to come back, we will give her the opportunity to finish her slides. But if not, do remember that she was approaching the end and you can see the remainder of those slides. We'll publish those on the uh, cluster platform after today's event. So with that, we're going to move on and I will invite my speakers for the panel debate to switch on their cameras and mics. We have Aitor Mintegri, who is the EU Affairs Officer from the Basque Country Delegation to the EU. Mervi Karikorpi is the Head of the EU Innovation and Industrial Policy at the Technologies Industry of Finland. Marielle Campanella is Head of European Projects at Pole SCS, specifically the Dream Euro Cluster. So please switch on your cameras. You're very welcome to joining us today. I think, uh, Aitor, we'll start with you. Just tell us a little bit about what you're working on, your perspective, uh, and, and then I will ask the same for Mervé and Marielle as well. Yes. Um, so good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Um, actually, today well, you, you introduced me as EUFS officer at the Basque um, uh, government office here in Brussels, which which I am. But I, I think I'm also using um, wearing a double hat because I'm I'm um, a member of the board of the of the Bangar Initiative, which is um, it's a it's a network of, of regions. Um, who are um, basically collaborating together since 2014. So we have so some some experience in, in interregional co collaboration, and we've produced some some papers, and we have some uh, um, some um, pilot pilot activities um, on 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 different value chains. So a very a very uh, practical uh, sort of like implementation of our interregional collaboration. So. Um, so I would like, I, I will be uh, wearing uh, those uh, two hats, I would say. Well, thank you very much, and, and apologies. I know it's one of those perennial issues in the EU circles that people have a lot of different jobs that they're trying to juggle all at once. Um, Mary, tell us about uh, what you're working on at the moment and, and how that fits with our topic. Uh, thank you, Jennifer, and to, uh, good morning to everyone. Thank you for having me here. Um, uh, I'm working kind of uh, at technology industries of Finland and uh, dealing particularly with uh, our activities uh, related to EU uh, research and innovation uh, uh, industrial policies, uh, but also kind of working very closely with uh, our member member companies. Uh, which many of uh, uh, them, or most of them, actually uh, have their clients all around in the single single market. Um, so uh, my perspective is uh, uh, very much kind of from the uh, uh, business. Uh, I look at things from the business uh, point of view, and particularly kind of from uh, uh, technology-based companies' perspective. Uh, but as as uh, as uh, Benua, uh, mentioned, kind of, I have I had the kind of uh, opportunity also to be involved in uh, the work of the Industrial Forum Task Force Four, which was uh, uh, looking uh, opportunities related to cross border and uh, uh, cross ecosystem um, investment. Uh, so I think that I also kind of have that angle to the discussion here look forward to having uh, our discussion. Well, thank you, Mervi. Marielle, uh, tell us a bit about the Eurocluster dream. Give us your perspective. Yes, indeed. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Good morning, Jennifer. So um, I am from uh, Pol SCS, where I'm in charge of European projects. So Pol SCS is one of uh, the French clusters, French pool de compétitivité. And uh, I'm based in the region uh, Provence-Alpes-Côte d'Azur in the southern eastern part of, of France. Uh, and uh, Pol SCS is specifically working in digital technologies, so mainly uh, AI, IoT, cybersecurity, and macroelectronics. And uh, being in charge of European activities means that on one hand, um, I am accompanying our members that are looking for uh, raising uh, European uh, funding for their innovations. 
And I'm also in charge of engaging our cluster in the European activities that have a strong added value for, for our members. And the, the Dream Euro cluster is one of these, uh, these activities. So PolSCS is coordinating uh, this project since uh, so September last year. Uh, Dream is one of, <clears throat> is one of the 30 Euro, cluster, Euro clusters projects that started specifically in the strand uh, digital. And here with the consortium of, uh, of uh, five partners, so coming from four countries, so France, Belgium, Romania and Italy, uh, our goal is to, um, to reinforce the ecosystem of uh, digital technologies, so digital actors and how they can uh, deploy their technologies into the manufacturing sectors. So to do so, uh, cross-border collaboration is uh, quite an important point to be able to support them in, uh, in uh, better deploying their technologies into those, those sectors. Well, thank you very much. I, I mentioned at the outset about how interregional strategy and collaboration was essential for the green and the digital transition. Uh, we saw there on uh, on one of Milana's slides that it was the green transition, the digital transition, and of course, smart manufacturing. Um, I taught, tell us a bit about how the interregional collaboration helps towards these goals. Why is that better or why does that give an added value compared to a top down approach? Um, so, um, I think, well, you, you, you said it yourself, you, you mentioned it to the, the present and I, I think, I, I, I think that Benoit also made reference to, to it is, um, the fact that the, the challenge, um, I mean, we, we are, if we are to succeed, this, this transition is, is so huge. The amount of investment is, is so huge that, um, um, and at the same time, um, I mean, there's a there's a market failure, meaning that um, there's really a, a fragmentation of of, of investments. Um, there's um, there's there's really a need to um, to develop new technologies, to develop new green um, and digital products, new business um, business models, um, and and to do so. Um, um, I mean, if we want to go for 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 more sort of like uh, research to more industrial deployment of of those uh, those technologies, um, collaboration would be interregional collaboration would be essential uh, in in the in to the extent that it would allow to de risk those those in in those in investment sharing. Um, those risks. Also, interregional collaboration can be uh, instrumental in having, um, uh, via this collaboration, access to uh, a specific research centers, specific uh, test beds, uh, demonstration um, um, infrastructures that may are maybe not in your region, but in, in a partner region. So, um, I think um, I think that shows uh, to what extent. Um, interregional collaboration can be um, can be really uh, essential to, uh, um, as I was saying, to succeed this uh, this trans transition. But Mary, um, I thought that I mentioned uh, a market failure. I mean, as someone who says you you view things from a business perspective, do you see that, and how much of what you're hearing chimes with your experience? Uh... Mm, yes, of course, kind of, uh, mm, uh, partic particularly kind of if we look at, if we think about the kind of the recent, uh, recent developments, we also can uh, see the kind of the increased uh, uh, geopolitical, uh, geopolitical tension and uh, increased competition, uh, competition between a kind of different parts of the world. And that has kind of led to certain type of kind of developments. Um, uh, so um, uh, there are kind of uh, uh, developments, kind of uh, which have affected that kind of uh, we can kind of see market failures, and uh, uh, then um, uh, also of course, kind of if we if we think about kind of technologies uh, at a very very early stage. Uh, then uh, sometimes the market doesn't yet ma uh, function and we are perhaps kind of talking about creating totally new new markets. So there are kind of situation where uh, the, the question is that kind of uh, uh, does kind of, do the markets kind of work or do we kind of need some other instruments is very uh, kind of uh, 
um, uh, justifiable. And we have seen, for example, if we think about the uh, important projects of common European interest, uh, I think that they have been a kind of instrument to, uh, to address uh, uh, the market failures in, in certain, uh, certain areas. Um, but in principle, uh, I guess that kind of my thinking is that uh, um, the soon we kind of uh, get into the situation where the kind of the market uh, where the market can kind of uh, lead the development, uh, it's a kind of good thing, and that 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 doesn't kind of mean that. Uh, um, I still think that the kind of uh, the collaboration between the private and public sector, uh, in many ways, is uh, kind of getting kind of more and more important. Um, for for various reasons, particularly kind of if we want to see kind of uh, uh, fast scaling of uh, innovations, uh, because that also then requires uh, uh, certain actions if we think about the uh, business uh, environment, the operating environment. Well, Maria, let's talk about innovations then, and specifically what we want to see happening in the green and digital transitions. How does interregional um, innovation, if you like, or, or innovation hubs, that sort of thing, feed into, you mentioned the digital side of things, but also bringing in that green transition as well? Um, yes, indeed. Um, um, as a cluster, one of our, um, of our key goals is, is to uh, uh, support our members in their, in their growth. Uh, especially the the SMEs and the startup, and uh, and this growth, of course, uh, uh, can happen if they go uh, beyond the border of our of our region and even of our of our countries. And uh, the green and the digital transition is actually um, a challenge and also an opportunity for for our SMEs in the digital sectors. This is what we, this is what we are trying to to push forwards in the Dream Euro Cluster project. Um, we have currently. Um, uh, an open call for innovation project that has just uh, opened uh, yesterday and uh, we are really um, pushing uh, companies via this call to collaborate with uh, other companies from other regions or other countries so that there's a mechanism of bonus points to push them to uh, to collaborate in this way and we are here clusters from different regions to help them in finding uh, in finding the right partners and uh, one of the goal also of, um, of these innovations is to demonstrate how digital, digital technologies can support in the more efficient uh, use of resources into manufacturing processes. So how IT, IT solutions can support in the green transition by consuming uh, less water, less energies, less raw materials and so on. So this is really uh, at the core of the mechanism that we're currently implementing in the Dream Euro cluster. Of course, we are not leaving the SMEs alone there. And health clusters, we are there to help them in finding uh, the right partners in, uh, bring, in building the right bridges with other ecosystems in other regions and other countries. And I'm just checking, I'm sure we'll be able to share the link for that call in our chat for everyone as well to have a look at. Um, Etoir, let's talk about how cross-border collaboration works. What are the useful instruments to make that happen? Um... So, um, I mean, there, there, there are, I mean, if we're talking about the EU funding la uh, landscape, um, I would say that uh, there are a, a couple of instruments that um, we um, we really value from from a sort of like Vanguard initiative perspective, and that one is the, the one that um, um, that the previous speaker um, just. Uh, just presented the, the one on i3, um, which we find very very interesting because there the collaboration is is not much on a territorial basis. So basically, so so it, but it's more along along value chains um, because um, I mean many many times the the, the part your partners are not those you are sharing the border with, uh, but mostly those uh, that are along your your value chain. So that's a very, very instrument, uh, very, very uh, interesting instrument for um, for us from from a, from a regional uh, point of view, um, and also I, I would have to mention Inosup, um, Inosup uh, like cluster facilitated uh, project, uh, um, uh, also working along value chain has um, um, has proved to be um, a, a very uh, very interesting very interesting interesting instrument i i'm i'm probably less um 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 uh, 
I don't know how to say like more less less eager uh, about interreg in, in in general because as, as I was saying um, that's more sort of like a territorial cooperation um, and 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 from from a vanguard perspective our cooperation is is mostly based on a smart specialization of strategies and and along along value chains um, so yeah so I would I would mention those two yeah. Well, well I, we all like the word smart. We put it in front of things for a start. Melvi, I noticed you nodding along there. Uh, so, I mean, same question to you. I mean, tell us about the instruments you find useful, um, whether there's, there's any instruments that are missing or processes that could be brought in that would make things better. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Jennifer. I quite kind of agree with the uh, previous uh, panelist. Uh, if I look at kind of from our kind of member companies' point of view, um, I also kind of uh, uh, think that uh, uh, their approach is kind of uh, they start kind of from uh, their value value network value chain. Uh, and uh, they perhaps kind of ask that, okay, in what kind of business uh, they would like to kind of be in the future? And what does that mean that uh, for their partnership network? So with whom to kind of get into the kind of new business? Um, so in that sense, kind of uh, uh, instruments which support this type of uh, value net uh, network type of uh, 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 kind of uh, uh, approach, uh, I think that they are kind of uh, something which are kind of favored by, by companies. And uh, I think that also kind of from the region's point of view, because ultimately regions, of course, are kind of interested that whether kind of successful companies are located kind of uh, uh, in their kind of regions and uh, uh, also whether they attract kind of uh, people uh, uh, kind of uh, in the coming coming years. So in that sense, I think that for regions, it would be also too useful to look at kind of uh, not only these uh, so-called regional instruments, but uh, look at the kind of the instruments kind of in a wider uh, wider sense. Because if even when we kind of look at the EU instruments, for example, the EU Innovation Fund, um, I think that it kind of would suit very well kind of uh, um, uh, for uh, uh, also for regions purposes in the sense that if they have kind of companies who are kind of uh, planning major investments, um, which would kind of fit in on the agenda and uh, 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 goals of uh, EU Innovation Fund. So I think that kind of one would need to kind of, it would be useful to look at the kind of the whole uh, um, a landscape of uh, uh, both uh, uh, EU level instruments as well as uh, uh, national and uh, uh, regional local kind of instruments and then pull them kind of uh, uh, to, uh, kind of uh, together kind of to to support uh, uh, companies kind of who have uh, business and who are involved in the regional cross regional uh, networks. Well, Marielle, let's talk about the, the landscape in general and what sort of tools are useful for, uh, for helping with this enhanced collaboration? Is there anything you think is missing? Are there any challenges? Uh, what's your view? Beyond the, the, the pure, um, uh, uh, let's say, innovation funding part uh, that has already been talked by Aitor and Hermi. And Mervi, by the way, I fully uh, agree with what Aitor said about the Innosu projects, which were... Uh, uh, really right tools for for doing so we have we have successful experience in uh, with uh, with those uh, funding schemes we try to replicate that in a in a in a uh, small extent into the euro clusters but the funding um, dimension is a bit different there uh, we are also involved in a in a project which is part of the cluster exchange scheme as part of the cluster excellence so this project is called excite and the goal here is um there is a kind of motto which is that the cluster exchange is like the erasmus plus airbnb plus mythic tool for cluster members so it's quite self-explanatory it means that here uh, the goal is to to support uh, cluster members in building relationships with other members of other clusters in other regions and the cluster exchange scheme is supporting this uh, exchange. Um, clusters are, are funded to elaborate delegations and missions into other ecosystems. 
and uh, the cluster members, mainly the SMEs, can get a small, a very small uh, subsidy, a very small grant for their travel cost and, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, on the paper, it's a very good tool. It's very well developed. It's a bit more developed, more complicated to put in place because of administrative issues, because of um, um, of the process itself, which is a bit heavy. But it's, it is a success when it's when it is put in place and when you find the right companies to be put in touch together. In Excite, we have been able to develop um, uh, more than 35 exchanges during one year uh, in, this, uh, in this framework. So uh, it's, a, it's a very good result when you keep in mind the difficulties of finding the right companies and building the right administrative processes. Uh, we have a good experience um, uh, thanks to that in building uh, good relationships with the cluster in Germany, for instance, and we're trying to replicate that. Um, during the second year of, of the project. So uh, the right tool exists, but administratively speaking, it's a bit heavy to be put in place. And sometimes it's not known enough uh, to the company. So we have a, a big work of uh, explanation, uh, of pedagogy to explain them how it works and how they can be involved there. Well, a quick follow-up to that, Marielle. I mean, if something is very administratively heavy, does that disproportionately affect SMEs who maybe don't have the bandwidth for the, 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 the resources to put the time and effort in? Well, we have to say to the SMEs, uh, don't worry, we do the work for you and uh, we will present you uh, everything uh, ready. But behind, it means that the work is on our shoulder and it's not always uh, very easy to, to work on these administrative steps. But our work as clusters is to facilitate the life of SMEs as much as, as possible, indeed. Well, thank you. Um, I want to remind everyone who's tuned in and joining us this morning, you can get involved in the conversation as well. You can use that Q&A function to put your questions to our speakers um, or you can raise your hand and we'll allow you on, on camera and on, on microphone so that you can ask in person. Aitor, let me ask you a bit more about the governance model of some of these uh, interregional programmes and tools. Do you think uh, we're on the right track with those? Are there, are there, are there gaps in what we could be doing? Or are there uh, more streamlined ways that work that this could work? Where do you think there might be problems with the governance structure that could just make things easier and more streamlined? Okay. So you, when when you talk about interregional programs, you're talking about our EU interregional programs, right? Not not not. Yeah. We're the um, of today. We can come. Back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I mean, obviously, there are also regional. Um, sort of like a strategies and to reach our programs. So that's why uh, my clarification. Um, I think, well, Matt, I think maybe um, already mentioned the, the importance of uh, pub uh, public private collaboration. So I would, um, I would see very much um, uh, sort of like within the, uh, the program committees. Uh, sort of like um, the involvement of the um, of um, cluster associations, for example, representing the, the private the private side of of the uh, of um, of the, 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 the yeah of the, of the funding the funding programs. Um, so um, so um, I'm I'm thinking, for example, at, at regional level, when we define an an innovation strategy we um, um I, I was referring these uh before to the smart space strategy so the, the the governance model there is is very very important and has proved really good results trying to uh, involve what we call the the quadruple helix so not only uh, knowledge institutes or cluster associations uh, also the the um the government of course but also the um sort of like the, the citizens i don't know to what extent that that kind of governance models could be also be implemented at, at the european the european level um um i guess it's somehow done through uh, public consultations but uh, i i i would um I would favor some more of like integrated uh, within the within the governance of the progress more of the of the of the private side. Um, um, I mean, if we if we are really to uh, speed up in, in investments, of course. 
Mary, again, same sort of question to you. I mean, what sort of governance model do you think works best, whether that's in an, in an ideal world or whether that's something you've seen in practice? Um, yes, uh, I think that we have a kind of uh, the governance model also kind of uh, 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 needs to somehow kind of take into account that we on one hand we have this uh, um, uh, need to kind of to uh, to boost uh, investments uh, and ultimately kind of uh, uh, private investment, of course, also pr uh, public one, but uh, uh, increasingly private investments in a very short time frame of time frame so uh, many of the studies uh, kind of show that uh, to achieve these uh, climate and digital goals which the uh, eu institutions and the member states have already kind of agreed on uh, we kind of should kind of uh, see major increase in investments and then on the other hand of course kind of it's also kind of very important to ask all the time that uh, what, for example, new technologies uh, kind of uh, what they will kind of bring and kind of how disruptive uh, uh, they will be and what that will kind of then mean for different uh, uh, business uh, businesses and uh, uh, different uh, sectors, public and private, and also uh, also the markets. So we have this short term and long term kind of uh, needs. And uh, thinking of the kind of the short term uh, needs, uh, how to get things going quite fast, then I think that, uh, first of all, it would be kind of very important that, for example, these cluster organizations and other stakeholders, there would be kind of, they would have a good kind of uh, 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 overview of uh, uh, what kind of, uh, what their kind of uh, business plans uh, 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 kind of exist at the moment, kind of where one could kind of expect to see kind of that companies would really kind of get involved and committing committing in major in major investments, um, uh, and then kind of uh, if we think about the longer kind of term uh, goal uh, to foresee uh, uh, future disruption, that's a little bit different type of kind of goal, uh, also kind of important, and uh, there kind of this. Uh, wider uh, uh, involvement of different stakeholders, um, I think that it's kind of uh, uh, even more, even more more important. Uh, but uh, uh, if we think about this, how to get things fast going and kind of see investing uh, investments growing, I think that it would be very important to take these uh, uh, potential kind of uh, companies involved in the kind of and their kind of networks their kind of value chains in the discussion as soon as possible and uh, you probably all have kind of gone through these recent uh, uh, communications and uh, uh, proposals for new acts related to green deal industrial plan uh, um, by the commission and there for example is uh, net uh, net uh, zero uh, uh, um, net zero platforms are being kind of discussed with the idea that the member states and the uh, commission kind of would together kind of to look at kind of how to go about it. And uh, they are kind of also kind of, I, I think that it would be very important uh, to take the companies uh, uh, in, involved and kind of if we, uh, and to kind of start creating kind of the joint vision, how to pool kind of resources. And uh, then for this uh, longer term kind of uh, goal, uh, there are also, of course, the uh, research uh, uh, RTOs play a kind of role if we want to have a kind of joint understanding that what, the, for example, the disrupt disruptive technologies kind of would be. Uh, so uh, anyway, kind of the question is how to kind of really bring the different stakeholders uh, together uh, to have a kind of common view uh, and uh, uh, acknowledge that ultimately we would like to kind of see uh, private in the, uh, investments uh, increasing. So to take them on board is, I think, that it's very important at early stage. Thank you, Mary. And I should note that we have a lot of discussion happening in the chat. I see people from Scandinavia to Spain, Bavaria to Brussels, and covering everything from cars, automobiles, chips, cancer research, and the Ukrainian cluster alliance as well represented. So uh, plenty happening in the chat. I see no questions in yet, but remember, we're coming towards the end. So do get your questions in if you have questions for our panelists. Marielle, something we haven't really talked about yet is the ecosystem or the so-called networks of networks. 
Um, tell us a bit about the Silicon Europe Alliance, uh, what it is, how it's come about, and, and what this means in terms of a network uh, of networks. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, Polices is engaged in the Silicon Europe Alliance uh, uh, for, for several years now. It's an alliance of, of clusters around uh, macroelectronics and IT technologies, um, which uh, has celebrated uh, its uh, 10 years uh, and end of last year. Uh, this initiative actually was born from a, an EU project and now is a, is a self-funding uh, initiative. So we gather uh, 11 clusters from, uh, from uh, uh, Europe in these uh, strategical sectors of macroelectronics. And uh, we are used to develop uh, regular uh, common uh, activities of networking among us and having an impact of our members. Uh, one of the, uh, for the concrete outcome is, for instance, a uh, Euro cluster that uh, was born from the Silicon Europe Alliance, which is called the Silicon Euro cluster, uh, focusing on the electronic uh, strands and also the issue of, uh, of uh, supplies of semiconductors uh, within, uh, within the EU. Uh, via this uh, alliance, we are able to interconnect our various ecosystems from uh, from those uh, those ten countries around uh, around Europe. Around Europe. So, in case uh, any of our members, which are mainly SMEs, is looking for a, a specific. Uh, relationships for business or for innovation, we are able to have a very direct contact among those ecosystems because we do know each other uh, very well. We are used to organize uh, regular uh, meetings together, uh, even uh, sometimes a pavilion during uh, trade fairs and, and so on. So uh, the fact of knowing each other uh, very well for, with the long term and uh, with the notion of trust, which is essential, um, makes uh, very uh, easy connections among, among our, our, um, our clusters. We are also engaged in a more, let's say, a political level, I would say. Uh, for instance, in the frame of uh, the EU Chips Act, we have developed position papers that represent the position of our clusters and SMEs in particular on these specific issues. Uh, we have supported one of our uh, cluster partner in the Alliance, uh, which is uh, the cluster Silicon Saxony, in uh, building um, a so-called uh, alliance of EU regions in macroelectronics, so more at a political level. So we are involved really at different, uh, at different levels uh, within our respective ecosystems. Thank you very much. Um... Ator, can I get your perspective on this idea of networks and how important that is? Because as you mentioned, it's often done by, by you know, we, the idea of avoiding silos is important, but at the same time, drawing on the same sort of expertise and direction and maximizing the businesses that work in the same area is also important. Where do you get the balance right for creating a network? Um, so well, that's, that's, a very, <laughs> that's a very good question. Um, well, Anyhow, like to me, um, I mean, when we when you've been in Brussels long enough, um, uh, um, I think you realize the, the importance of, of uh, joining forces and, and creating this uh, this network of, of networks. Really um, combining the um, the capabilities that you that you may have at, at your own uh, regional level with um, with different capabilities, the skills uh, that at, at other. Um, at other regional levels. So when we're talking about um, clusters um, and the objective of creating world-class clusters, um, I think the, the, the yeah the, the, the European cluster uh, platform is, is doing an, an excellent job. Unfortunately, the probably the funding um, allocated to those those initiatives is, um, is not really what we would. Um, but, but would want, but um, to me, what it's um, what's in, instrumental is that, that the the, um, the idea behind that the um, that creating these these alliances is uh, is really the, uh, the the way forward is um, um, yeah. Well, I'm going to give one final shout out for anyone who wants to join the conversation, even with an example of best practice that we would be able to share with everyone. We are please encouraged to use the Q&A function or to raise your hands. So we want your thoughts. So it doesn't have to be a question. It can be just, as I say, an example of best practice would be great. 
But in the meantime, I have a final question I want to ask uh, of all our, our panelists, which is how do we measure success? Um, what, if you like, are the KPIs? You know, you can point to something and say it's going well, but you need to, particularly when you are engaged in funding, to be able to measure that. And what are those sorts of metrics that you need to use? Mervi, I'll start with you. Uh, <clears throat> yes, the kind of the uh, uh, different funding organizations, of course, have their kind of own uh, uh, KPIs. But um, uh, when I kind of, uh, we also kind of ask kind of uh, from our member, member companies, sometimes kind of feedback from, uh, from for example, from the different uh, national or EU level kind of funding instruments. And uh, from uh, out of the kind of EU funding instruments, uh, the uh, uh, EU innovation fund is something which kind of uh, gets quite positive feedback. And I think that kind of one of the reasons for that is that uh, uh, it's very clear kind of if we look at the kind of the political uh, uh, goals, it relates very directly to the, how to kind of reduce the uh, um, uh, emissions. Uh, so in that sense, kind of, and then it leaves kind of for the uh, for the uh, businesses and uh, uh, stakeholders who are actually kind of uh, behind the kind of the uh, project proposal uh, to kind of decide that how to kind of get there, how to kind of reduce uh, 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 reduce uh, um, uh, CO two uh, emissions. Uh, so it's in one way it combines the kind of the macro level uh, political targets uh, uh, and uh, the bottom up approach, and I think that that kind of somehow sits uh, uh, is something what the kind of the businesses the companies kind of like, um, and uh, uh, so I think that kind of uh, uh, we have this uh, pick uh, related to both uh, digitalization as well as the uh, green. Uh, um, a transition, which are anyway kind of quite ambitious targets. So uh, to us, I think that uh, uh, KPIs and the kind of uh, goals related to that, and we, where we already have some common understanding within the EU, uh, they are the kind of the key key targets and objectives. Uh, at the macro level. But of course, then when we get into kind of to the local or regional level, there are also kind of other and kind of uh, when we also, I think at the main in the industrial forum task force four, we kind of uh, identified the sustainability in its different dimensions, independently whether we talk about economical uh, sustainability or environmental or the social uh, sustainability, that that's actually kind of the major challenge uh, in the EU. And many of the other challenges which we have can be actually understood within that uh, uh, sustainability challenge uh, framework. So in one way, one could say that the sustainability challenge in its different dimensions um, defines the uh, main uh, KPIs. And Marielle, uh, what in a nutshell does success look like to you? Is it as Melvi suggests? Is it economical? Is it societal? Is it environmental? Or is it all three? Well, I would say it, could, it, it it's basically a mix of 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 this these three aspects. Uh, um, in the in the instruments I have mentioned, the cluster of Funosup, uh, our work is mainly based on the principle of of cascade funding. Uh, so for small funding for targeted projects. So basically, we are asking to the SMEs to define themselves their KPI of what is a success from their point of view. Uh, and we ask them also to include specifically a KPI on the, on the environmental dimension to demonstrate that the IT solutions has a positive impact on the greening, on the greening aspect. Uh, for projects which are a bit older, I would say, we are trying also to monitor what this uh, collaboration built via cascade funding uh, became few months, few months after. So beyond this uh, pure funding uh, that is provided by, by, uh, by the, these projects, we are trying to ask uh, the SMEs whether the fundings help them in building a new partnership with, this, uh, with these companies, new markets via uh, pure business contracts or new opportunities via MOU and so on. So this is something that, that we're trying to monitor, but we need, a, kind, we need a, a bit of time because, of course, this is not immediate after the, the funding of, of, those, of those projects. And Aitor, then final question for you. Um, how do you define these successes and how does that then feed into building future projects or developing future programs? 
Yeah, I mean, so if, um, if we're talking about measuring success uh, in terms of of uh, mastering the the disease of transition, I, I, uh, my quick question would be: um, I would look at the um, first at, at the volume of investment, at the the the, the number of um, probably like new technologies being developed, and new new products based on those technologies. Um, new services, new new business models, um, um, number of collaborations, um, as Mary is saying, maybe um, I mean CO two emissions, um, I don't know, um, avoided or or captured. So I, I probably those would those would be my 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 um, my KPIs. So that would be sort of like my my uh, my quick question. Um, the second, the second part of your question is, is more, a, a, is more a, a tricky one because um, um, we've we in the Bangar initially we've been developing for for some time uh, also these um, these policy papers because there's the, I think as Marilla was saying this I mean this in in our network of regions there's this uh, obviously the, the, the political support that is there but it has a very handsome collaboration with with clusters with knowledge institutes with SMEs on 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 different uh, value chains um, uh, at the time being out there seven seven uh, pilot projects being being developed um so uh, so when 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 it comes to success we we feel that there there are some gaps uh, or there are some eu instruments that probably should be tweaked uh, for example um ipcis um very very good instrument but very very slow to be um, to be implemented and and also not really um, not really focused on on smes um so so we feel that there's sort of like a new collaborative collaborative framework at the eu level should should be uh, should be developed uh really allowing for um for uh, cluster smes uh, uh knowledge institutes to to work together and be somehow um maybe exempted from uh, from um from um um, state aid, for example, in the in the same as as it's the case for for IPCIs, but probably so like in a, in a more accelerated um, way. So um, these are, um, I mean, ideas that that we've been uh, that we've been working on, and and that probably uh, would uh, see the light in in the in the next programming period. Um, so we'll we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Mervi, you wanted to add something? Uh, yes, I still kind of wanted to kind of very, very kind of good to, uh, kind of comments, very kind of concrete kind of uh, KPIs uh, from Mariela and Aitor. Uh, I want you to still kind of, if you look at the kind of the longer term um, uh, impact, I want you to kind of raise still is the issue uh, kind of that uh, also that uh, ultimately we are also kind of interested uh, that how the kind of the new uh, solutions and uh, new concepts uh, developed uh, um, uh, in, in Europe for green and digital transition or uh, to address other challenges that kind of uh, what kind of uh, how we can increase the kind of the European value add also globally. So I think that this kind of looking also kind of beyond uh, the EU and kind of cooperation with the uh, um, uh, other countries. So we are now nowadays talking these like minded countries, but anyway, having also this international collaboration and increasing the European handprint. Um, I find that that's kind of very important to any way to have also this, that openness uh, uh, in mind. Particularly in the in the green transition, if you like, areas, yes. the environmental challenges are global rather than national. Well, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for your uh, really insightful thoughts, for uh, answering our questions. We have no questions from the audience. Uh, a, a quiet morning, I think. Perhaps we shouldn't start so early on Wednesday. Some more people will be prepared to switch on their cameras. But thank you for your attention. I know people have been indefinitely involved in following because they've been using the chat quite a lot and commenting and asking questions. And of course, 
we have been sharing those links. That's been the, the biggest question asked over today is, can you share the links for this information before all the stuff that you've been talking about? So we will make sure that that happens and it will all be published on the platform uh, after today. So with that, thank you very much. And thank you to our three previous speakers as well. We're going to welcome back the fabulous Nina to tell us about funding opportunities. Thank you very much, Jennifer, and thank you very much to the speakers as well. Uh, very interesting uh, insights that you've shared. Um, just some final remarks about funding opportunities, um, some that you've already mentioned and some other highlights that I wanted to uh, just um, remind everybody about. So um, Interact Europe, we've already you know, discussed about it at the beginning. There is a call for proposals for interregional cooperation projects with the deadline of the 9th of June. So this is for uh, projects together, policy relevant uh, organizations from different countries together to work on regional development issues, any topics related to the relevance of the regional needs that fall under the scope of cohesion policy. The first three years of the project, the core phases are for exchange and transfer of experience as well to uh, improve the policy instruments. And in the fourth year, the follow-up phase is to monitor the results and, of course, the impact of the cooperation that was also mentioned in the discussion. Um, you will find the information on the Interact Europe website. Plus, if you go um, to, to the website, you will also see other, all other open Interact projects um, and calls. So um, you can have a look um, into your region to see whether you find call that is relevant for your region if you want to establish an interact project. So there are several published. Please have a look at this. Moving into cooperation between Europe and Ukraine, there are also two very important calls that are open. The support to Ukrainian companies to be integrated into the single market. Here, the call wants to select a consortium to support various um, uh, Ukrainian SMEs up to 1,500 that are oriented towards growth and sustainability that can um, benefit from direct financial support and uh, use this for business support services. For example, market research, uh, looking into legal, organizational or financial advice to enter the European market, participation in trade fairs, the adaptation of products of the EU market, patenting, licensing costs, and other potentially um, potential services that can be covered by the direct financial support. This call is open for applicants as current or former EN members from the Enterprise Europe Network, members that are registered on the European Cluster Collaboration Platform as national cluster associations or meta clusters and cluster networks, members of the Ukrainian Cluster Alliance, or Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs Intermediate Organization. Deadline for this call is the 27th of April, and there is an info day on this call on the 3rd of April, so have a look out for that. This is a call under the single market program. You see the topic ID in the screen and the link in the chat to have further info. Then um, the second call that I wanted to mention, support to Ukraine entrepreneurs, Erasmus for young entrepreneurs. So this is for, uh, to look for projects to cover activities such as giving training on doing business in the single market, developing other relevant skills and boost entrepreneurial capacities and support the entrepreneurs with building contacts and networks, matching them with European entrepreneurs and supporting them in, partic in participating in business exchanges. So this is for helping both Ukrainian entrepreneurs that are at home or if they are displaced, it's also possible to support them. The deadline for this call is the 11th of May with an info day on the 27th of March. Uh, the same uh, call under the single market program and the topic ID in the chat uh, and on the screen, plus the link in the chat, it's the way around. And for both calls, um, a very important event in which can also lay the baseline for maybe for consortia to apply for these calls, will take place on the 29th and the 30th of March in Kosice in Slovakia. Our clusters meet regions, um, European clusters, integrating Ukrainian clusters and companies into the EU value chains 
a unique opportunity to build new business relations between the EU and Ukraine, to find partners to invest and to trade. And we have a great program lined up. You can find the agenda published on the European Cluster Collaboration Platform with high level officials from the European Commission, from Slovakia and from Ukraine in uh, different formats, in panel discussions, in pitching sessions from clusters and enterprises, business and business matchmaking, and site events, for example, um, talking about utilities, health, agri-food, textiles, industry 4.1, uh, 4.0, defense, ICT, so many potential topics to build new business relations. And we really want to highlight this as a unique and great event for you to come and to see uh, how we can integrate Ukrainian clusters and companies into EU value chains. And last but not least, since we're today at the C2 lab in Lund, as already said, please look also into the C2 lab input paper that was published. You can read more about funding instruments for innovation, several instruments that were men mentioned today, the I3, the Innovation Fund, uh, the European Innovation Ecosystems, have a look at this. Um, I think there are also many interesting um, in incentives to, to look into these funding schemes. And you learn also about the innovation ecosystem in Sweden. Thank you. Thank you very much, as always, Nina, and for all your organization in leading up to our talk, cluster talks every two weeks. Uh, for those of you who want to continue the conversation, remember you can do it on the LinkedIn general discussion group there. We will put that link in the chat as well. But if you can't find it, you can always use the hashtag EU Clusters Talks on any social media to continue discussing with your colleagues. You can also register now for the next talks on the 5th of April. It will be raw materials in the circular economy. 19th of April, we will talk about private financing. And the 3rd of May is the transition pathway on construction. And don't forget, last but not least, register on the European Cluster Collaboration Platform. It is the hub where you can talk to your colleagues, find partners on the country level, the region level, or on a sectorial level. As we heard today, all of those elements are important. So thank you very much for your attention. And I hope you all have a great day. We'll see you again in a couple of weeks.